It's not every day that a city decides to build a whole new neighborhood in the middle of town. But that's exactly what developers in New York City did to create Hudson Yards. Hudson Yards is the newest neighborhood in Manhattan. It's an elite district with some of the world's most expensive real estate. It's also the largest private real estate development in US history. There is a lot going on here, so let's talk about it. You cannot miss Hudson Yards. It's the cluster of these tall glass buildings in West Manhattan, like crystals rising out of the ground. Hudson Yards is everything New York. Bold, lavish, extravagant. It makes a statement. It's also a $25 billion mega project, surpassing developments like World Trade Center in New York City, City Center in Las Vegas, and Miami's Brickell City Center. Stephen Ross is the billionaire real estate developer, and he's the man behind Hudson Yards. Covering about 28 acres, the site of Hudson Yards is located between the neighborhoods of Chelsea and Hell's Kitchen on the western side of Midtown. But originally, it wasn't supposed to become Hudson Yards. It really wasn't even supposed to be a neighborhood. Originally, it was supposed to be the site of a new stadium designed to host the 2012 Olympics, right here in New York City. The plan was for all boroughs of New York to participate and host different sports, and the centerpiece would have been West Side Stadium. That didn't work out, and the Olympics were hosted in London, so the land was then master planned as a mixed use residential and commercial district when the stadium plans fell through, which led to the 6.2 million square feet of building space that became Hudson Yards. The Eastern Yard was the first of two phases in the neighborhood, with eight buildings in total. It opened in 2019 and spans from 30th to 34th Street and from 10th to 11th Avenue. The Eastern Yard contains three towers that are directly on 10th Avenue. It has The Shed, which is a performing arts center. It has shops, restaurants, and it has the first Equinox Hotel. Now, the Western Yards is the second phase that still needs to be built, but the details haven't fully been released on what exactly is being built there. This project, or I guess I should say this neighborhood, will host residential and office skyscrapers, schools, retail space, parks, hospitals, and public art. It's got everything. So really, you have these two pieces that come together and form Hudson Yards, the Eastern Yard and the Western Yard. Now, here's the tricky thing with the Western Yard. The second phase has been repeatedly delayed due to a couple financing issues. The problem is that most of the planned affordable housing in Hudson Yards was supposed to be built in Phase 2, and Phase 2 has conveniently been delayed over setbacks that have come up with building the 10-acre platform over the rail yard that will be used to build the Western Yard. The problem is, the developers can't get financing, and this is the phase with the most affordable housing, which was set aside at substantially lower prices than the units typically sell and rent for. So the developers aren't exactly financially incentivized to want to get phase two done as fast as possible. So they've been dragging their feet a little bit. Now the good news, half the neighborhood is already built. Phase one, which was the Eastern Yard, was completed a couple years ago. But building this neighborhood is an absolute planning and engineering headache since Hudson Yards was literally built on top of an active rail yard, the builders have strict timeframes for when they can build depending on train schedules. Now, the first building in Hudson Yards was 10 Hudson Yards, located at the southeast corner of the first phase. This building was actually completed early because this tower specifically was not built over the railroad tracks. Some big names like L'Oreal, Sidewalk Labs, and BCG have offices here. You also have Tower D, which is 15 Hudson Yards, connected to the shed, and has some of the highest end condos you will see. Next up is 30 Hudson Yards, which opened back in 2019 after being constructed for a good four years. 
showcasing its neo-futuristic architectural style. 30 Hudson Yards ranks at the top of the list for having the world's highest outdoor observation deck, The Edge. It is also the sixth tallest building in New York City. Next, 35 Hudson Yards, very similar to 15 Hudson Yards. Some luxury condos in the sky you would not believe. They are absolutely insane and some of the most expensive real estate in the world. And then 50 and 55 Hudson Yards. Again, more cutting edge office and retail space here. Now, phase one of Hudson Yards wasn't just a bunch of fancy offices and condos. It actually has a seven story mall with 100 shops and 20 restaurants, covering a million square feet of space. You'd think it would have a cool name, right? But it's just called the shops and restaurants at Hudson Yards. Creative. Hudson Yards has also invested heavily in outdoor space and recreation, considering it's in the middle of New York City. A six acre public space called The Plaza was designed for world-class events and art exhibitions. The space is actually considered as a ventilation area for the west side of the yard. The plaza is also home to The Vessel, which you've probably seen somewhere on social media. Believe it or not, there's been a decent amount of controversy surrounding this public art display and tourist attraction. It actually got shut down in July 2021 after several people jumped off. After multiple attempts at changing their policies around safety after the suicides happened, the vessel was indefinitely shut down. Now, Hudson Yards has gotten a lot of attention in the media, both good and bad. There's a lot of hype around it. I mean, Meta, as in the company that owns Facebook, supposedly has plans to lease some space here at 30 and 55 Hudson Yards. While Hudson Yards has and continues to attract these big companies with its tech-savvy design, lavish interior, and futuristic floor plans, there's one big issue surrounding Hudson Yards. Rent. This neighborhood is already the most expensive in the city. Office space, apartments, and price per square foot in Hudson Yards has skyrocketed. The prices companies have to pay to be here are way higher than the average for midtown and downtown asking prices. So affordability isn't the driving force here, especially since remote work became popular after COVID, which left Hudson Yards strangely empty for a while. Even now, coming out of the pandemic, it's not a desolate neighborhood, but it's not as busy as you'd think. Especially after all the media attention, you'd think the neighborhood would be booming with people, and it's not. And considering how much the developers got in tax breaks, hoping to bring a bunch of new business to the area by building Hudson Yards, it leaves a lot of people questioning, was it worth it? People have criticized the soaring prices and deemed the project as catering to the rich. It's not hard to see that that's true. I mean, this project wasn't designed for the top 1%. It was designed for the top 0.01%. And given that this project is being built above an active rail yard, construction of Hudson Yards is not an easy one. That's because you're not just building something new on land, but building the new land itself, which is basically a platform with pipes and concrete built in to create the foundation and infrastructure that these towers stand on top of. The working conditions down there can also raise a few questions, not to mention the train schedules, which create issues around safety and scheduling for the workers. Hudson Yards definitely hasn't been an easy project, and it's basically only halfway done, so there's still a lot of work to be completed, but it's gotta leave you wondering, are they gonna make some changes in the design of phase two to build more resources that the city actually needs and build a more usable neighborhood? Or will it be more buildings that set the new record for some of the most expensive in the world? We'll have to wait and see. For more videos on international development projects just like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time.